What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and it is LVO Weekend. And with that, one of the largest Warhammer events in the world, and a huge new set of previews for the game. We have a bunch of really cool and exciting announcements for Warhammer 40k. Some of those are going to be confirmations of rumors and leaks that we've had previously, and we have some new information that could herald some really interesting changes to the game. The first one is Strike Force Agastus, a new boxed set for Space Marines that brings in a lot of data sheets that we have talked about previously on this channel. Specifically, the Brutalis Dreadnought and Desolation Squad. Now, in a previous video, I talked about prospective data sheets for both of these that were uh, allegedly leaked previously, but we still had a lot of open questions, specifically about the De Desolation Squad and how its uh, war gear actually functions. And it looks like this article is gonna give us some very important hints to that end. In my previous video, I discussed several different weapon profiles that were attributed to the Desolation Squad, including their Castellan Launcher, uh, Super Frag and Super Crack Rocket Launcher profiles, as well as a unique Vengeance Launcher. Both the Castellan Launcher and the Vengeance Launcher were purportedly indirect fire weapons, whereas the Super Frag and Super Crack were not. Now, exactly the loadout of these four weapon profiles was still up for debate, and it looks like we finally have an answer to that. It looks to me like, uh, unlike a standard rocket launcher, the Super Crack and Super Frag rockets, and this is sort of uh, hinted to in the article as well, where the article states that they have the choice of Frag or Crack rocket launchers, are separate weapon profiles that you can choose to equip your troops with. So unlike a standard missile launcher, where every time you choose that model to fire, you choose whether it will load a Frag missile or a Crack missile. Instead, these are separate launchers. So you have a Frag missile launcher profile and a Crack missile launcher profile, that you can equip your models with individually. On top of that, it appears that the Castellan launcher, which I imagine is this uh, little grenade launcher looking thing at the bottom here, is standard to all of the Desolation Squad members. So regardless of what type of missile launcher you equip them with, they all will be able to fire that Strength 4 indirect profile. Their direct fire profile is going to be mutable from model to model. Now, the difference here, obviously, is that the Sergeant has a different weapon, and I think that this is going to be the Vengeance Launcher. So the Strength 6 2 damage indirect fire profile is going to be restricted to only the unit leader. Now, whether or not these models can fire their indirect fire weapons alongside their frag or crack missiles is going to be a big open question. I'm interested to see if there is any additional rules associated with the, with the frag missile specifically. It doesn't seem to me like a profile that you are particularly interested in taking if you are already have an indirect fire blast weapon uh, in your war gear slot and you're giving up a D3 plus 3 damage crack missile launcher profile for that. So if they have to choose one or the other, then I hazard to guess that these guys will basically just be loaded with the super crack missiles as standard. That Vengeance Launcher profile is very interesting, though. It gives you a pretty solid indirect fire weapon, but with the limit of one per squad does make them extremely valuable. Now, the other profile that we had spoiled back in that leak was the Brutalis Dreadnought. And we still had some open questions about exactly what the Brutalis Dreadnought profile looked like, and exactly the loadout of the weapon profiles were, I think, still in question. It looks like everything that was leaked at that time is going to be correct, with the Brutalis Dreadnought equipped with a two set of multi meltas or heavy bolters on the front of the chassis, a turret with an Icarus twin heavy stubber, which uh, actually looks pretty cool. I, I, I really like the uh, Icarus heavy stubber turrets almost everywhere that they show up, whether that be on a repulsor or an impulsor, I think they're always very cool, as well as an option of two separate melee profiles, either a fist that has a built-in set of auto bolt rifles. Now, it looks like this is actually a set of twin auto bolt rifles, so you're going to be getting 12 additional shots if you take the fist. But uh, the other option that was rumored was the Talon, which I imagine is obviously the weapon that does not have the auto bolt rifles in it, which loses those potential 12 shots off the wrists, but gets reroll wound rolls in melee. So... The original rumors, I think, said that there was only one set of, twi of two auto bolt rifles in uh, one in each fist, and having a set of two of them in each fist actually does give you some pause when you're considering whether you're going to take a big punchy fist or a talent that rerolls wound rolls. The rerolls wound rolls is obviously extremely powerful, especially if you're trying to crack armory and melee with this guy, but having a bunch of anti extra anti-infantry shooting is certainly good as well. 
Really like the look of the Brutalis Dreadnought, and I think the fact that it does equip twin multi-melt does makes it compete with the Redemptor Dreadnought for firepower. And it looks like its uh, damage output in melee is going to be significantly increased, and the rumor has it that it also has a faster speed value as well. I think this actually competes with the classic Redemptor Dreadnought pretty effectively, and I'm not really sure which one I would rather take. Maybe a mix of both, like one or two Redemptor Dreadnoughts just to add fire support, and then a couple of Brutalis Dreadnoughts to act as a front line. If you're building a Dreadnought-focused army, the combination of the two could be extremely powerful. Moving on, we have a new boxed set preview. It features Dark Angels versus what looks to be a Heretic Astartes army, or at least a Mixed Chaos army that is being led by Vashtor. Now, I've talked about Vashtor in a short video on my channel and the release and the announcement of that model, one of the most unsettling looking models in Warhammer 40, which means I think that it embodies the aspects of chaos in the 41st millennium. The box set also includes the new Azrael model that I've also talked about when it was initially spoiled, as well as a couple of intercessors and some Dark Angels Terminators. Now, it looks like these are mostly just, it looks like the intercessors just have the Dark Angels upgrade pack alongside them, and the Dark Angels Terminators are straight out of the Dark Angels Terminator kit. Now, the interesting thing about this box set is actually the narrative behind it. Apparently, Vashtor has led uh, an attack on the rock. For those who don't know, the rock is the floating fortress monastery that all the Dark Angels live in, and allegedly houses the stasified body of the lion, the Primarch of the Dark Angels Legion. Given that there has been so many rumors around the lion being released, at least towards the end of 9th edition, or maybe as a prelude or an introduction to a new edition of 40k, focusing the narrative on the place where that guy is living really points to that being something that happens in the future. I would be shocked if a narrative around the Dark Angels Primarch doesn't evolve, especially when we get to Vashtor's book in the Arcs of Omen narrative series. Now, while not strictly Warhammer 40k, we do also have some Horus Heresy announcements that can also work alongside 40k. In this case, we see the release of the Cerberus Heavy Tank Destroyer in a plastic kit. This was previously a Forge World model, but now is available in plastic, so available a little bit more widely for people who want to include one in their 40k army. Although, uh, these things have never been particularly that exciting, so... I don't know how often that's gonna happen. However, last but certainly not least in this lineup of announcements has been a new set of kill teams and one that we discussed in the original 2023 model preview that Games Workshop released on their YouTube channel. That had what looked like an Adeptus Arbite in silhouette and that has been officially confirmed now with a new kill team set soul shackle which pits adeptus arbites in the depths of a hive city against some drukari cabalite warriors and a lot more variety than you get in the normal cabalite warrior kit and i wouldn't be surprised if this became maybe a new trueborn unit or something similar the adeptus arbites are where things have really captured my attention though because the new and improved reimagining of the arbites is absolutely sick these guys definitely look like they're supposed to be law enforcement officers in some pretty tricked out riot gear. They're a little garish and over the top, which I think is absolutely perfect for somebody who's trying to direct the attention of the Imperial citizenry. And the models look very cool as well. We have some guys with shackles, some specialists like a sniper and a gunslinger, as well as the storm shield and power mall, uh, as well as the riot shield and power mall guy that we saw previewed originally in the video, a heavy stub gunner, what looks like a demolition specialist, as well as, I think most excitingly, a canine unit using a cyber hound. I absolutely love these guys, and I think very much like the Imperial Navy Breacher teams are going to be getting a data sheet in Warhammer 40k as well, most likely as an agent of the Imperium. Hopefully, they see some play. I'd love to see Agents of the Imperium expanded a little bit more as a concept in 40k, maybe able to take entire armies out of assorted Imperial support units. I like it when these little side units see play in the game proper and help to expand the universe a little bit and sort of mesh together the existence of these law enforcement or other military forces alongside the battles that we see in the grand scale of Warhammer 40k. Now, a couple other spoilers that we got revolved around the Arcs of Omen and Taros. There has been a graphic posted by Warhammer that stated that post the three announced arcs of Omen book releases, there is another release that has been quote unquote redacted by the Ordo Xenos. And the latest arcs of Omen Tarot that was released, and the latest arcs of Omen Tarot points to something Xenos happening. Discussing a swarm of blood crazed entities 
the picture depicts rats swarming across the galaxy. Now, whether or not this is tied to an existing faction, something like Chaos Demons swarming across the galaxy, or maybe even Tyranids, or a new Xenos faction is being speculated. The fact that it is tied specifically to rats indicates that maybe there is a return of a past verminous Xenos faction, something like the Hrud, who were reimagined in Xenobiology to be weird tentacly monsters, but nonetheless act like rats inhabiting the crawl spaces of big Imperial ships. Now, the other interesting thing about this tarot that was pointed out to me is that the sword at the top that is being reached to by what looks to be a four-fingered hand, which is pretty important, looks a lot like the Dawnblade, Farsight's magical Xenos weapon that keeps him alive for a really long time. If that is a four-fingered hand, then that is most likely the hand of some Tau guy being overrun by whatever these rats are representing. What looks to be a new Farsight model indicated in the 2023 model teaser, I imagine that whatever this new book is, post Arcs of Omen, is going to have something to do with Farsight and the Dawnblade, as well as whatever this new narrative represents. Maybe we'll finally get some origins for the Dawnblade and exactly what that thing is and, and what it's doing to Farsight and the Farsight Enclaves. I don't know, but let me know down in the comments what you think, and let me know what you think about all these previews. I think this preview set was pretty cool. Obviously, the Adeptus Arbites are sick. The new Space Marine units are very exciting, and I'm excited to see them on tabletops near me. Shortly after this video goes live, I'm also going to be live over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tacticaltortoisetv. I'm going to be watching some games from LVO, maybe playing some games myself, and it's going to be a big watch party kind of vibe. So come hang out with me. I'm going to be live all weekend talking about LVO and doing some LVO coverage of my own. So hopefully I'll see you there. With that, thanks everyone for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks everyone who supports the channel, either over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tacticaltortoise. YouTube channel members, Twitch subscribers, all you people are great. I love you. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.